Today, we're going to talk about open source licensing. This is the first webinar of the open source series. Uh, and we're going to talk about how license types affect your code uh, and how your code is managed. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, you know, uh, big aspects of what open source is and the philosoph philosophical dimension of open source. We're going to be talking about licensing uh, different business models um, and how, as a developer, uh, you can uh, either leverage open source or um, the traps and uh, things you should not be doing with open source. Uh, namely, what are the um, open source projects that you should not be contributing to unless uh, you see uh, those good flags or uh, not contribute if you see those red flags. Uh, as usual, uh, feel free to uh, join our community as well. Uh, on skycaptures.io. But uh, yeah, without further delay, Karen, uh, over to you. Thank you, Shavi, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Marjara. I have my LinkedIn, so you can definitely get in touch with me. But uh, I, I've been in, in open source industry for the last 10, 10 11 years. Uh, used to work into many uh, auditing, m &A type of stuff, licensing. Uh, uh, and currently I'm working with Amazon Web Services in their open source program office, uh, dealing with licensing and community aspects of uh, AWS. And in addition to like working with developers to create different policies and process. So I'm, I'm really happy to be sharing this uh, information with you. Uh, and let's look into what we have in our agenda today. Uh, so at first, as Shavi was mentioning, we will go into a brief introduction into the open source software, uh, how it all started, and we're going to dig deeper a little bit into the licensing aspect of it, uh, uh, mainly talking about the IP law, copyright uh, information, uh, and also provide you with some insights that will help you with uh, contributions to open source projects. And then indeed towards the end, we're gonna talk a little bit on different business models related to open source. Okay, so uh, without further delay, let's start with the uh, slide set. Um, so <clears throat> the first thing that I would like to share here is what exactly is open source software? So open source software is something that is freely available to you in the internet, meaning that you can download that software, you can start inspecting it, modifying it, and enhance it, right? So uh, the big thing with the open source software and the proprietary software that companies usually share is that in proprietary, you don't get the software source code, but in open source, you get the source code with it, and then you can modify, enhance it, right? Uh, it is always, it's been believed in the community that the open source software is often very cheaper, right? It is a, it's more flexible from than the proprietary software and it has a more uh, bigger lifespan because in proprietary, if the company goes away, then you don't have that proprietary software in, in the market. But in open source software, if one project community goes away, you can still take that source code and start creating uh, a replica of that particular open source software. So, so the lifespan of the open source software is, is bigger than, than the proprietary software. So, uh, now let's talk about how it all started, right? So uh, uh, you can see, uh, you probably would have heard of the software movement, Linux, uh, uh, and uh, prior to 1983, right? There were other places where what was happening was people were just sharing the source code and software among friends. Like you give it to your neighbor and, and uh, or to your uh teammates, your classmates. Uh, but in 1983, Richard Stallman created a project called GNU Project, right? So how, why he uh, created that, he was he used to work for MIT, uh, 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 IT department. There, they were facing some issues with the, uh, with the printer system, right? And they were not able to modify that. That made him uh, uh, mad. And then he started creating uh, uh, the software and working with the uh, other developers to create 
a new set of software, which was in, in entirely the opposite of proprietary software, right? That's when he started creating the GNU project. In 1985, he released the GNU manifesto where he explained about the different freedoms of, of, the, uh, of the software developer, right? And, and, and uh, to summarize those freedoms, like it's mainly like a freedom to run the program as you wish, right? A freedom to study how the program works, meaning that you can download and, and then inspect it. A freedom to redistribute the copies of that software. And, and, and in the end, the freedom to make your modifications distribution, right? So, so, so this was the philosophy that why when uh, Richard Stallman started the GNU project back in 1983 and 1985. Like, but once uh, uh, after 85, they went to like 1986 and that's when they coined a particular foundation that kind of manages this whole free software found movement, right? They were building some small softwares like Emacs, GCC. Uh, what they were missing was the kernel. That's when in 1991, Linux Travolts came, came into picture and published the Linux kernel uh, uh, to the community. At first, the Linux kernel was not in, in, under the free software license, but uh, in 1992, they moved it to uh, uh, the GNU GPL license. So till, till this, this year, everything was talking about free software. There was no mention of open source, right? But when uh, what what happened in 1997, there's a there's an article by the name of the Cathedral and the Bazaar. That article became so famous in the industry, and they were talking about the uh, the different business models or different development models, and using the example of a cathedral and a bazaar. So the 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 person who wrote that article explained that in a cathedral model, which is like a free software model, where every software release you do get the source code but the software is not being developed in the open right like in gcc you can get the source code but you don't know how the development is happening it's always between a small set of people uh, that they are doing the development but uh, uh, as a bazaar is something that everything is being developed in the open on the internet in the view of public and that's when they coined the name called, uh, which is open source as we know today, where everything that happens, it happens in public. So, um, so when, when we talk about is free software equal to open source, in my mind, yes, it is. Because they, at, at a core, they both have uh, the same uh, philosophy. But where they differ is that free software value uh, uh, freedom mainly to the developers, right? But uh, open source is mainly freedom of the so uh, the software, right? And and then if the software is free, then everyone can do whatever they want to do. So this they have some some slight philosoph philosophical differences, but uh, uh, in terms of the software like GNU software and open source software, they are equal and the same. Okay, so once that uh, open source uh, term was coined in, there was a need for defining what that term was. So that's when the open source initiatives came in picture and they defined what an open source software means. These are the 10 different attributes for an open source software. I'm gonna go briefly into that. Uh, uh, basically what it exactly means is that you can, you are free to use it, redistribute it, give it to anyone or not distribute it. It's, it's up to you what you want to do. It should always include the source code. It should always allow you to create derivative works. Uh, uh, that's that's very important, meaning you it cannot restrict you from doing certain things. Uh, the, the fourth point is it's very important to understand is that it always makes sure that the author code or the author's integrity is maintained. Meaning that it doesn't, it should not be like you remove the copyright information, you should always maintain the author's integrity there. Uh, the other big thing here, the open source, like there should be no discrimination against any groups, any uh, fields. Uh, it should always have a license. We're gonna go deeper into what uh, kind of licenses there are, but 
the license should not restrict certain things. It should not be specific to a product or specific to a particular technology or, specific, or restrict you from using it in a certain software, right? So that's why it so it's gives you all this freedom, but without any restriction. So that's that's the main intent of, of defining the open source here. The last slide on the on the introductions, uh, uh, I want to uh, introduce you to uh, a, a thing called like these days open source is, is being used as a term for as development model. Right, open source has become so popular in, in, in the current industry that that people use open source to like create uh, to use it as a development model. Mainly, what does it mean that it allows for open collaboration? Meaning that you can have discussions, you can have like documentation, source code, everything in open source, right? If you compare that with proprietary, everything is all internal. The only thing that you get is a user document, right? And when, when you see there are some unique characteristics, something uh, with respect to that release early and release often, that is the term that open source brought in in a picture. And, and now everyone, we want to do that with all our proprietary software. Release, it, it also means that the development is happening in open. Uh, the peer review is happening. Right there, when there are more eyes to your software, it gives you more insights into the review. It gives you more insights into how you can fix your security issues. And the biggest thing that I see is that open source software allows people to create whatever test projects they want to create. So then your software is being tested in more different environments and more different ways than your proprietary software. So that's why people tend to use open source as a development model. And, and most of our enterprises today do that. So, uh, so that's, that's what uh, uh, the introduction. Before I move to the next section, are there any questions? Yes, we do have a question. And this is around the current state of open source. And, uh, um, and I think at the end of the day, like mentioning the fact that open source started from a individual or a person. Uh, yeah. And today open source is extremely popular. Uh, there are individuals working on open source, but there is a lot of enterprise as well working on open source. What is the current state of this evolution and what is the trend? So, so that's, that's a really good question. Um, in, in terms of the current state, you were, you were point on that these days, enterprises tend to get more involved into, into open source projects because they are more reliant, you know, relying on open source software for their internal systems. And, and, and it's been growing. Like if you see from a, like 10 years before, there were like less uh, uh, open source usage in a, in a company, but now there's, there's been like 70 to 80% of the software is made of open source software. So when big, organizations understand that that their main big software are based on open source uh, they tend to try to invest money into into the open source projects and maybe like create new projects in open source so example like like android as a project started as a as a as a small project but google uh, added a lot of uh, 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 money into it, and that's how they they became. And there's been many different cases where that is happening still today. And in my my opinion, it's going to keep on growing. Enterprises will keep on adding more things to open source. Okay, and uh, and why should companies and individuals care about open source? What what does that bring um, today? So why open source? As so, so open source is, is something that started as a philosophy where they wanted to stop proprietary companies from restricting people from, uh, from, from basically modifying or they want to create, they want to keep on having their monopoly. Open source for a developer is very important as they get insights into how a real world software works. Imagine like coming out just out of the college, working on some open source projects, give you like so much in-depth knowledge into how 
things work in, in the real world. Uh, in terms of companies, as I, as I mentioned before, this the open source is, is so involved now. It's been in each and every software. You open any application on your mobile phone today, you go to legal, you'll find lots and lots of open source being used and it will keep on continuing to be used. So for them, they need to keep an eye because they need to maintain their proprietary com uh, commercial software. So yeah, it's very important for both of them. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Thank you, Karen. Okay, let's uh, move into the next section, which is uh, understanding on the open source licenses. Right. In order to understand the open source licenses, let's first understand what exactly a license and an intellectual property is. Right. So, so this is like a, like a, a brief intro on on the IP law. Uh, uh, so there are four ways to protect your uh, creative work. Right. As I can say, you can have a patent to your to your uh, invention. You can protect yourself with with a trademark. You can protect yourself with copyright and trade secrets. Trade secret is something like, we don't know what uh, Coca-Cola formula is because it's been stored with, with Coca-Cola. So for our software, right, that is protected by the copyright law, meaning copyright law basically deals with anything that is literal work, meaning books, movies, uh, and, and all, all the things that you write on, even on paper, that's protected by copyright law. So copyright law gives you gives you protection on not on the functionality but on the how you have written it, like basically source code and binding. The copyright owner have a control on what will happen to this thing, meaning that he can decide whom he wants to give it, and and what what will happen with that particular work. So that's how he can protect. That's why the author, the owner of that copyright is very important. In terms of the software the copyright owner has a right to reproduce the software, meaning he can create multiple copies. The, he has a right to create derivative works, any, anything uh, 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 that can be created. And, and the copyright owner has a right to distribute the software. So, so all these rights are given to the owner of the copyright by the law that, that we have. And it's like all international, it's not just US, it's like everywhere you have this, this right. It depends on for how many years you have the right, but you have all these rights with uh, respect to your software and source code. When we talk about a license, right? When you have a right uh, with you, you need to make sure that you give that right to someone else. The way to give it to someone else is through a license. Right, you license a particular copyright, you license a particular patent for someone to give them permission to use it. Now, imagine, uh, don't think software, think of a movie, right? A movie when you create a movie, after that, what you do is like you give it to a distributor. A distributor will be just specific to US. Let's say you want to distribute internationally, there will be a other distributor. So you can restrict what the other person can do with that application, right? So whether whether it, they can use it for a commercial thing, whether they can only distribute online, they want to just distribute only on the in the theaters. So all these things are controlled by the license, right? The license grants have certain conditions, meaning that if you distribute in uh, in a movie theater, you need to pay me ten percent royalty. That's how the licensing works, right? Where in open source world, the licensing works if you distribute a particular software. You need to give me attribution. You need to give me uh, the source code. So all these different things uh, that happens, and all these things happen through uh, uh, the the license. Uh, it can also uh, include some terms related to support, upgrade, and maintenance. So all this uh, the license. And um, when we talk about open source license. By definition, what exactly it is giving you, it is giving you that I am giving you this particular source code, which is available under these, these, these terms that can allow you to do modifications. You can redistribute if you follow these certain obligations, meaning like you provide me the attribution, you provide me the source code, all these things. Uh, uh, and there are many different dis uh, obligations uh, that each different licenses have, right? 
uh, there are, if you go to that link, this is a link by the OSI. They have a set of licenses, different kind of licenses that uh, follows the um, open source definition. And, 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 and remember, the license cannot restrict you from doing certain things. What they can do is that if you do this thing, then you need to do this. So, so this is important. It cannot stop you from doing it, but it can impose certain obligations. Uh, and the, the most important thing on the license, it just not only protect the, uh, uh, the, the project, it also protects the contributors. It also protects the users of that software. So, so that's why having a project with an open source license is, is very important. I'm gonna go a little bit into uh, the, uh, the different type of licenses that we have, right? So, so this, you need to understand like the biggest open source thing is, is that uh, you, want, you can use it uh, without any restriction. You can use it with, with a little restriction, meaning you provide a little bit of attribution to, a, to the uh, customer or to the author. Then you have licenses that allows you to use it in a certain way. And then you can use it without any restriction. But it, if you use it in a different way, then it allows, then it tells you that you need to release the source code. That, that's where the copyleft licenses will come. And you'll see most of the copyleft licenses are GPL and, and kind of focuses on a free software kind of uh, understanding because what they are trying to do to, uh, at the core is basically making sure that anyone who's using it and modifying it, right, they keep the modifications in the same license so that the other end user or any other user of that software have access to your modifications, right? That's why like when, when you talk about big enterprises and when they create software and distribute it, that's why they don't like these certain licenses. But it's not does not mean that you cannot use it. You can use it, there's no restriction. It's just, it's, it's a slight uh, different way of using these licenses. There are licenses that focuses on network protecting meaning that uh, you can have a software if you are using it internally, but if you are creating a service around it, that's when you start creating um, problems for a company. Uh, uh, and this one interesting thing that I wanted to share here is, as is, 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 is you see this, this slide, uh, the top 10 licenses, this is I think in 2020, uh, the top most license these days is Apache, right? And then followed by MIT. And then we have GPL, GPL V2, BSD. But if you see on the, on the right-hand side, the, uh, the, the trend, how it is going, in 2012, that's when uh, I was in my first few years of, of my job, um, there was a big chunk of software in open source under the copyleft license meaning GPL V2, V3, and other different type of licenses. But if you see the trend, the permissive licenses are growing. And as of today, 75% of the software that comes into, into open source, they are permissive. And less than 25 is, is, is uh, popular licenses. And, and in, in my opinion, the, the main reason why this is happening is because there are big enterprises that wants to use software and what they are saying is if you really have a gpl software it will be difficult for us to do it that's why they want to create more permissive but if you think in terms of a developer that is also a, a good thing because now you have all those big enterprise level software available under permissive license and you can use it for whatever reason you want to use it without any restriction so it's a win-win situation for both developers and enterprises. And, and, and it's a really good thing for the whole open source community. Okay, I think uh, the next is the news uh, section. If, are there any questions there? Um, we've got a question on the chat about the uh, license called SSPL. Uh, I don't have, I don't, 
I haven't seen your 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 uh, that sort of license being mentioned on uh, on all the the licenses that you have listed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so SSPL is a very um, uh, a new kind of license that um, that is becoming very popular in in the industry. Uh, if you think of um, um, a, a project Elastic, uh, if you think of project MongoDB, they kind of use that same license. What so if you think in terms of the open source definition, right? Uh, let's let's go back to the definition here. So open source definition is is basically risk, you cannot restrict someone to use a particular software under a particular under uh, for a technology or for any kind of restriction. But what that soft SSPL is doing is, is saying that you cannot use it in 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 the uh, in the SaaS industry, you cannot use it in in this particular industry. You can have, you can take that software, use it for your internal use. There are no restrictions; it's permissive, but you cannot restrict in a particular in industry. So that's why it falls out of the purview of open source licenses. But uh, the bigger thing is they are at, uh, the projects that are using this. They are portraying it as an open source license, but in reality. That's not an open source license. That's more of like an open core uh, business model where they are trying to earn money and they want to try to stop big companies from using it. There are other ways to use it, but uh, they chose to have a SSPL license, which mainly means you can have access to the source code, but you cannot use it in a particular industry. Uh, and that goes against the open source definition. Okay, that's interesting. Does that mean that um, if a uh, a company wants to use this SSPL license, would they have to pay some sort of fee to to an entity, or how would that work if they want to get around that? I I, I think every every company has a different way of handling uh, the SSPL, but uh, it SSPL kind of restricts. Uh, uh, the software, like what, what was happening was like people were downloading the software and, and they were creating services around it without any restriction and they want to try to stop it. But they, they went to a wrong way. They can have a different license. They could, uh, like AGPL is the license that kind of stops you from using um, uh, some software in a network uh, uh, arena for a property company. But if you do it, then you get the modifications back to the community. Uh, they definitely get money uh, uh, if someone wants to use it, but uh, uh, or they are, I think, pushing everyone to use their own service instead of other company service based on their software. Okay. Okay. Are there any kind of weird licenses that we should <laughs> be uh, aware of? Yes. So, um, uh, so in my in my in my experience. Um, uh, I used to do audits a lot, and we we encountered two of the very uh, like funny uh, licenses. One license uh, uh, is is something called beerware license. The license says you can use the software to do whatever you want to do. Uh, just whenever you see me, uh, uh, you just buy me a beer. So that's 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 one very funny. We saw that, uh, but we never met that guy, so no beer for him. Uh, and uh, the other thing that that comes to my mind, which is which happened to a real company, is is a is a guitar uh, license. I don't know the name of the license, but what it says is everything. Like you can do whatever you want to do, but uh, but if you uh, but you need to give me the guitar, right? Uh, we were at the last phase of the uh, uh, of the uh, project release, and legal decided it's cheaper to buy this person a guitar. Then going back and redoing the uh, the uh, modifications, so that we we bought that person the guitar. So yeah, that these are some of the funny uh, license. There are others, but I think I'll keep it just these two. I love this as a guitarist. I can definitely relate to that, and that would be a nice gift uh, yeah. as a compensation. I've got another question from uh, Rafael Bocino. Uh huh. Many felt betrayed when Elastic migrated to uh, the new license. Um, as a developer, how can you make sure that 
you don't commit code to uh, open source software that would you know potentially uh, migrate to um, to this kind of license is there something that we can do as developers to avoid that we can definitely do and i'm going to cover that section in in our next few slides but there's something called um, uh, a cla which is a contributor's license agreement that uh, uh, projects ask us to sign and what they do is they get all those rights from us instead of that we should be making sure that the community is 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 there uh, and uh, the community kind of we are giving the code to the community not to an entity behind it so uh, i will i will cover this thing but this is a very good uh, uh, question and and the the short answer is yes we can protect ourselves and and we need to be careful about that too because i've i've seen examples of that are that the companies are taking benefit of of a developer which we should protect ourselves okay um you were mentioning the you know free software open source that you know had a lot of similarities um but i'm familiar with the the name freeware as a free software is it is that the same thing as free software or what what is that so so this is like a very common misconception in the open source industry is they they consider freeware uh, sometimes uh, freeware as as a, a, a open source so freeware is something where you get a free trial of a software usually it happens for a for a commercial software where they want people to start using it right uh, but and and trial some of the features that they have in the project but they don't really give you the source code or anything and if you want to keep on using those features you need to pay money so it's mainly a commercial software but a marketing strategy for for a company to make sure that other people start using it uh, but it do, it's it's not open source and uh, you can use a freeware for your personal use but when you are working for a company we tend to like shy away from using freeware because freeware at the core is a commercial software okay makes sense uh, for the audience just keep asking questions we love that karen you can keep going thank you okay perfect okay so oops uh, i lost it uh, let's 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 go a little bit in depth uh, not uh, in depth but a little bit insights into into that i would like to always give it to developers right the first insight that i would always uh, give to uh, uh, the developers that i work with is is that please contribute back to the open source project now now when i uh, do that like they they come to me and ask okay i i don't know how to write the code in this programming language but i i, I cannot contribute because i don't like some people don't want to write the code for free for someone else but then i say that source code is not the only contribution that you can make to a project you can have you can add documents you can create examples you can create tutorials for that project you can promote that project right you can you can answer questions on that project on how to use it you can mentor someone else contribution so please keep in mind that source code is not the only contribution and open source projects in 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 uh, uh in the industry needs individual developers contribution and not just uh, the source code so so always be very uh, uh careful the other thing which i always tell people to uh to decide on is understanding the reason why contribute right you you definitely would like to contribute but also like are you contributing because your company is telling you to do it or are you contributing because you like that project or are you contributing because you are a student you want to learn you want to see how the project works so all these reasons are very important and that will increase the motivation around your contributions to that project so understanding why you are contributing makes makes a lot of sense the other thing which uh, 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 is very important to understand is that op every open source community are in a, a right now is is it works in a different way now when i say a different way like you can find small projects being used by like big uh, uh, enterprises um, and it's being only maintained by a single person 
right? But you will find some big projects that have a foundation behind it that can even have a venture capital behind it. And then you can contribute to that particular project too. But the way you do it is very different, right? Uh, uh, so because you need to understand what they are expecting in order for your contribution to be accepted, right? So that's why uh, it's always very important to learn and research the project, right? Learning in, in the sense that learn how they accept the contribution, researching how previous uh, uh, issues have been handled by, by that community. Are they accepting new, new particular features? So all these things are important. And, and the last that I would like to say is that always be courteous and be patient. I have like seen many interactions in the open source world or in, in any open forum where they start keep on like the fight on, on certain things, which we should shy away from doing it in open source and, or in public, but uh, always be thankful to the, to the community, always be thankful to the other developers and, and be patient because sometimes the maintainer have a different job, like open source might not be his uh, full-time profession, right? So he might not be able to put that much time into accepting your contribution. So be patient, right? And, 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 and tend to work towards becoming and helping that maintainer rather than demanding, because this is a community, not, not a proprietary software. So always be uh, insightful about that. So that's that's on the contribution. Uh, the, that's the question that you were asking, uh, where uh, how we can protect ourselves, right? So so I want to give an insight into into the CLAs, right? So CLA, right? It's basically a contributor license agreement. There is a very small projects like there are small projects that ask you to sign that, right? What it exactly means? It's basically somewhat of a like an like a reverse open source license. Meaning in open source, we are giving a particular copyright into a particular license. CLA basically says you protect me from any, if anything bad happens, or you give me all your rights, right? For that software, you give me the project and, and I will do whatever I feel good in doing it. What it exactly doing is, is basically asking taking all the rights of your software so that he can incorporate into their own project, right? It's, it's uh, some CLS goes as far as assigning the copyright to the project, meaning giving the authorship of our code back to the, uh, the project. Same way like our proprietary companies do in a company, like where whatever we write for them is, is their copyright and that's what they're trying to do. So, so the, the main thing that you need to understand on, on the CLA side is, is that when we sign a particular legal document, right, what, what happens is we are telling the project to use in, in whatever way they want to use. One statement from one of the CLAs I want to point out that uh, it's, a, it's a line, it, it doesn't require you to assign to us any copyright, but what you are doing is you cannot withdraw permission for its use at a later date, which is which is really good for a project. But if you if you think from a from a developer stand point of view, we will still attain the ownership, but we can, we are giving that permission to be used. What entirely should happen here is, if, if by by default all the open source programs understood in a, in a way when they were contributing is that we are not giving it to the company. We are giving it under a particular license and the license governs what, what happens with, with, the, with that particular code. Meaning that if you are giving an Apache, it's a permissive license. If you are giving in GPL, it's a permissive license. There is no need for a CLA. That's why when GitHub recently released a particular terms of service where they have mentioned that any code that is being submitted to as by a pull request is under the project's license. And that's what all the open source community wants. But when people sign the CLA, 
we give them permission to do whatever they want to do with our code and that's why that's what happened with with elastic right that's what happened with many other products uh, so they and it can happen in future too so that's why it is important for us to read uh, the CLA before we contribute and uh, I would clearly say that if there is no if there is a CLA please shy away from giving uh, the uh, contributions to the to the community uh, and and basically work on telling them remove the CLA I want to give you in the uh, uh, the open source license so that's that's my insights on the CLA it's a very controversial topic because some people do agree on on the CLAs that it's very important for the projects but some but from a community standpoint of view it just goes against the the whole open source uh, ideology and philosophy Sorry. question from 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 myself as of pure interest um you were mentioning earlier that the amount of permissive licenses was becoming more and more popular as opposed to co to copyleft do you foresee that the cla will become sort of obsolete and most of the open source projects will not require clas yes. and it's it's already today like there's a very small set of projects that require cla and it's been decreasing right uh, i want to like i work for amazon i don't want to take pick the name but uh, all the projects that Amazon release on, on the uh, open source, we don't require a CLA. Like there's no need for a CLA for anyone to sign. It just, you give your contribution under the open source license. There are like big companies like Google, uh, uh, Microsoft, they are also working towards shying away from CLA because as a community, we should not do that to our developers who are giving their precious time and contributing and then doing it. It's the, it's the companies that uh, uh, we need to be careful on what the intention behind uh, the CLA is. For some projects, it's important because it protects the maintainer from uh, malicious code or from any security issues by the, by, introduced by the developer. So it is important for some projects, but not for all the projects. And, and I do see it been reducing a lot. In, in our near future. Okay, and uh, would you have any uh, advice in terms of, um, you know, at Skycrafters, we are actually starting a new open source project. Uh, we've started it this week. Um, when we think about adopting a license, what is, the, what is the best license model? Is there a starting point that every open source developer should be thinking of when starting a new project from scratch? Yeah. And that's a very good leeway into my next slide, which is starting a new project. So, so I'm, I'm gonna touch base on your question, Shavi, and, and I'm gonna uh, provide a little bit more insights here. So, 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 so all our developers, we really want to like uh, to contribute. You can contribute to the open source community by creating a new project. But what I would suggest is always research the idea. There, there might be other projects that does the same work, right? Uh, uh, so, so always be careful of that. Uh, also, understanding the 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 release uh, early part, meaning that, like we all have mindset that in a proprietary that I want to be perfect before I showcase my work to the community. In open source community, no one is judging you. You you because it's been expected out of you that you come with an idea, you start creating, you put the effort and you create the project. That's why release early is very important, right? It, it doesn't have to be perfect. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's uh, very important. The other thing where I'm where, uh, I'm gonna answer Chavi's question is here. Like when you create a project, you need to decide on what's the license. You need to have some documentation, guide people on how they can contribute. Right, because we want to create a community. We want people to start coming and giving us the contribution. And always define your your code of conduct, meaning that how you want people to uh, uh, behave in your community. Right, the license selecting a license is is a big topic in in itself, but it depends on on what exactly are your intentions with that project. Right, I so so. If you, let's say you're creating a project where you want to create a business out of it, right? 
that's when you will think of uh, and you are worried about uh, your competitors using your software to create another business, right? And that's where you will tend to go more towards GPL V3, GPL V2 kind of licenses. But if you want to build a community and if you want to build, like attract more contributions and, uh, and you want people to use your software and then you have another kind of service or consulting that you help them uh, with where you can earn money, that's where you go with permissive licenses, right? That's mainly Apache, MIT. Uh, and and uh, sometimes what happens is projects or developers, they have patents into uh, that same uh, uh, technology. Uh, and if they want to protect the parents, they would like to have a particular parent grant or something in the license. That's where the Apache license comes in because it gives you parent uh, protection. So, so that's why Apache is the license that's been growing. And as a community-wide, it's the most accepted uh, license. Uh, uh, so, so I would say, uh, like in my personal opinion, Apache is the best license that you can use for, for your new projects. It gives you everything that's that's needed. Um, and, and, and don't forget to promote on Skycrafters. Thank you for, for the plug. And yes, we uh, we have a, uh, a program to help and support open source projects that need, uh, need help and help can be uh, provided in many ways. As Karen was saying, it's not only code, but it's also exposure, um, maintenance, documentation, uh, blog posts, content, videos, whatever is needed to promote a project. We got a question on the chat from Alex and Alex, Alex is asking, what if as a developer, I am contributing to an open source project and uh, this open source project is uh, transformed uh, to a business entity? Like we've seen that times, uh, I'm just thinking of the serverless framework, for instance, that was an open source project and then a commercial entity was created on top of it. Now, as a developer, if this company gets acquired or if this company makes money out of my contribution, what happens to me as a developer? Is there a way I can make money out of it? Making money out of your contributions, um, it's, it's a very tricky because, uh, because what exactly happens is like we are giving it for free. We are, we are providing uh, the, the, the code for free and, and not expecting money. But, uh, but definitely uh, the benefits that we will get is in terms of our future endeavors that we want to do, we will have more uh, 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 job op opportunities that we can, we can, uh, that can be created by our open source. But in terms of like creating money, there are different uh, 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 options that can happen, meaning that the company can decide uh, that they want to, uh, uh, if you are a maintainer of a project, they want to uh, provide you with some grant. Uh, you can have uh, your developer profile on GitHub saying that they, you can accept certain uh, contributions. You're working on this project, but by default, they are not obligated to, to pay you money. What you can do is you can have that same project and and create another business around it and 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 go through it and in terms of that i'm going to go to my next section here which is going to talk about uh, the business models it's a very quick few slides uh, i just want to give insights into uh, uh, how someone can create a business then i talk to developers and um, other people who wants to use open source, the first time uh, 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 they, they come and ask me like, can we earn money? Is open source a business? And I show them this particular slide. The slide set has most of the logos that currently in, in very popular uh, uh, companies uh, uh, that has that's based on open source. You have GitHub, you have Red Hat, you have uh, database companies, you have, uh, 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 like uh, 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 security companies uh, and, and all of these things 
are 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 already exist and yes open source is a, can be a business and it has been proven uh, uh, many many times that that with open source you can uh, 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 earn money uh, not just by using open source but by creating a project that is open source right so how people do that let me i'm going to talk about the four different competitive models that we have in open source arena these days uh, uh, first is open core uh, uh, open core is a model that it, that is uh, i'm going to do another uh, slide on that but it's basically what it, it entirely means is that the core is open meaning the platform is open but you have small 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 uh, uh, plugins or or small small projects that are proprietary and you are asking money for that big example here if you're going to think uh, uh, red hat right so red hat earlier started as a subscription model and they were they were basically asking uh, uh, people uh, money in terms of we are providing you support and and you go ahead and give us money but when it what basically it went ahead with is is that red hat created a product called Red Hat Enterprise, right? What that enterprise product has is a few enterprise features with a security focused uh, uh, release, right? And, and then you have an open source. So the open source one was free and then they added additional features to it and that they, that's how they become open core, meaning the core is open, but they have a business on certain features that they do. Uh, you'll see Microsoft, um, uh, uh, MySQL, uh, that, and, and Elastic is also a, a, a business on open core. Uh, then you have a different kind of business model where you are pro asking for services. That's not that much scalable. It's uh, earlier, it used to happen like that. These days, not so much. It's basically you build a software, you let the people use it, and then you provide your consulting services around it. That's, that's where you uh, it's mainly very popular for um, for, a, for a small project and individual type of projects uh, where you have expertise into that particular arena. So it's, it's really important there. The other way to uh, 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 create a business around open source is, is hosting it, meaning uh, everything is free for that software, but I will ask money for the infrastructure that you will be using uh, uh, on my um, uh, uh, servers. Uh, most of our uh, new age cloud companies, uh, AWS and other Google, Microsoft, they tend to go into that business where they are uh, hosting the, the software uh, that. Um, the last one is, is kind of uh, very important in terms of, because it's not been discussed that much. It's basically like, let's say, but it's also, uh, like very huge projects like Android or Mozilla, uh, what they do is they create a marketplace uh, for, for your plugins. And, and the Android is free, but Google created Play Store. They earn millions of dollars through that Play Store, right? Because the Google operating system became so huge, uh, the Android. And, and Mozilla, Mozilla is like everything is free, but how Mozilla earns money is through the uh, leads that they give it to the different ad companies, right? So they have those marketplace small projects that allow people to get ads and, and, and that's how they earn money. So these are the small, small things that we can do for by creating a business uh, uh, for, for a projects that you are creating, right? The, the, um, the most famous business model, uh, which has been going since, since many years, is, is an open core model, right? So open core, uh, if you compare that with open source, like the, the, the in open source, the, the core, the, there's a community around the product, right? So uh, in open core, there is a proprietary product around the open source project and the, and, and the open source project can have a community inside it. So that's the main difference. Like the, the, the enterprise product is what's making them money, and the and they are doing good in terms of the uh, uh, the the building the community part of it from the open source project. 
there are a few things that you need to be very careful with open core is that is that you need to balance what you are open sourcing and what you are keeping it pro proprietary because if you give more then you have no business but if you give less then the community is not helping so that's why people like uh, it's very difficult to do that uh, uh, separating um, uh, what's proprietary what's open source becomes a very difficult decision uh, uh, so so yeah it is it is very important to understand uh, what what's being uh, happening but yeah, there are ways by which open source projects can become huge projects. And all these new companies uh, like MongoDB, DynamoDB, open source, or, uh, Elastic or other things, these were like small companies, small projects. And, and that's how they created uh, these big enterprises now that's based on it. So yeah, yeah you can definitely create uh, uh, new, new projects and Create communities. And with that, that's the end of my slides. And I'll open myself to any questions and answers that you anyone have. We have a question from Santosh about um, how does one know if a open source project needs help? How do you approach to see if he or she could share a uh, some some helping hand? Uh, to any open source project, how do you how do you find those projects to contribute to? How do I find a projects to contribute to? That's so. So these days it's become a little easy, because now what we can do is we can uh, uh, find on on GitHub, right? Most of the projects are on GitHub. So uh, the first thing that I would like to say is research the technology that you are well versed in, finding new projects that are coming in that technology on 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 GitHub look for projects that have uh, 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 like issues where they have mentions like I'm uh, this is my roadmap I'm going to work on these new features and uh, uh, and those new features are the one where you can try to contribute and help the community uh, there are many uh, communities that you can join uh, that's available uh, where you can where people ask for help and th that's when you can help uh, those projects. Uh, but yeah, there uh, GitHub is the is the best way to go and search on the issues that you can help with, and just create a code, submit the PR, and 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 that's where you can help. It. Okay, thank you, Karen. Also, goes without saying that there is a way to contribute that is essentially contribute to the projects that you use. Um, for instance, you would use a you know npm library, and you see that a feature is missing or there is a bug, um, and you know the programming language. That would be a great way to one submit an issue, and then and then uh, submit a PR. As Karen was saying, like contributing to open source is not a developer thing only. It can be uh, just a user, or you can just also submit issues, like feedback to the software. This is also part of contributing. Uh, and there is no, at the end, bad contribution. There is always uh, something that is good to take out of interaction with open source, uh, open source projects. Yeah. Uh, we are getting at the top of the hour. Um, uh, if you have any questions, this video will be on YouTube. Uh, and for the ones watching on YouTube, uh, all the links to resources that Karen has been talking about are going to be featured um, below the video. Uh, of course, Skycrafters is here to help you if you have an open source project and you need help, um, you need contributors, you need a bit of audience, we'll be more than happy to help you with this. Uh, we also have internal projects, uh, open source projects that if you feel like contributing, uh, you will be more than welcome to contributing. We're still far away from what Karen has described in terms of best practices. We have to learn from uh, from his uh, presentation today hopefully you can help us uh, having our open source projects up to scratch and um, following or in line with the best practices uh, Karen thank you so much for your time today it has been extremely interesting so many topics that we covered so many things that I've never seen elsewhere and are, are fascinating to me um, Karen any parting words 
just it was it was an honor to come here and share my thoughts uh, with the community and uh, hopefully uh, I'll, I'll share more thoughts in future. Thank you.